Hi everyone, in this video we're going to work through this image and transform it into this. Okay, uh, we're going to work through this light part of the panel. Okay, sometimes it gets called tone. And we have worked through all of these options right at the beginning, but we just kind of flew through them. The goal of this video is actually explain what they do without too much like minutia. Is that the word? <laughs> minutia? Whatever it is. Just give you the broads so you know what you're doing when you are dragging them. All right, let's jump in. All right, let's bring in some images. Now we've been using this way. Okay, add photos. There is a shortcut. I don't use it very much. Loads of people do though. Under file, you can go add photos and you can see there the hieroglyphics. That shift command I on a Mac or shift control I on a PC. Okay, and you're like, why don't you use that shortcut? You seem to love the shortcuts. Uh, I do the drag in option. It's the way I use the most. Okay, so in grid mode, okay, I just go to these, uh, go to the exercise files, find the images that I want. In this case, I want you to bring in one to four, because we already have five. Okay, and just drag them into grid mode. That's what I like doing. Okay, and adding the photos. Up to you, use the shortcut, use the long way, clicking the button. The one thing with that dragging in version, okay, it won't work if you're in details mode. Remember grid mode, okay, one of these two, these are both grid mode, you can either go grid squares or grid where it tries to squeeze them in as nicely as it can. Okay, in details mode is this option at the end here. Okay, let's say we double click to go inside this one. I can't add images while I'm in details mode. If I grab all of these and try and drag them in, it goes, oh. <laughs> okay, so you have to be in G for grid mode. Then you can go and add them and it will add fine. That's the way I do it. But that's not what we came here for. We came here to look at the light settings. So let's work on this one here. Okay, all of these images here that are from the Adair series. Okay, this is my local little village. It's really pretty. Um, thatched uh, houses, thatched businesses, cool roofs. And um, that's the local school. Just some cool old buildings. Ireland is awesome. Okay, so with this open, I'm gonna close this down because that's a bit messy. And we're gonna E for editing. Okay, or just click this little button here. And we're gonna work through these. We kind of covered them quickly at the beginning, but with no real example, okay, or explanation of why you were doing them. And you came here to be pros. Let's be pros together. So the exposure is it's a really broad uh, slider, okay? Everything lighter or darker, the opposite of that, <laughs> lighter or darker, okay? Sometimes or very often an image will come out and the ex exposure will be actually pretty good depending on your camera, depending on the lighting conditions. So sometimes you don't move exposure very much, but it's very big, broad changes, okay? So you got to decide where you want to go with exposure, very broad. Contrast. Okay, adds a little bit of magic. The way it does it is it makes the whites whiter and the blacks blacker. If I crank out this up, can you see it just made the sky really white? Okay, and everything else very dark. It's really cool. Okay, I'm gonna leave that off for the moment because you can do a lot of that in these last four. Okay, so where it gets confusing is highlights versus whites. They seem very similarly named. Okay, and shadows versus blacks. What they are is I've got a little uh, image here. Uh, it's in your exercise files. You don't have to open it, but I'm using this as an example. So um, grayscale, there it is. Okay, so when I adjust these ones here, easy, the easiest to understand. When I adjust the whites, what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the whites, either this pure white or anything kind of really close to it, okay, and making them lighter or darker. Same with the blacks. If I adjust this slider, I'm adjusting this pure black plus probably this tile here. That's what I'm doing. As opposed to highlights, which is this larger chunk towards the pure white, but not quite there, okay? You can make some really big adjustments with the highlights and shadows, because shadows isn't black, isn't quite black here, but it's most of this last chunk of all the dark colors. And even though this is gray, think of it more as tone. If I had a really red image, the really dark reds are gonna be affected by blacks. Okay, and the really pinky reds, okay, or the pinky whites, okay, are gonna be affected by whites. Think of it not so much as the color gray, but as a tone, dark versus light. So, does that help? Maybe not. <laughs> Let's just drag them. So, highlights, remember, not quite whites, but drag it back, forth, just get a C. Oh, look at the information in the sky, look at that. Uh, awesome, so I'm gonna drag that down a little bit. Uh, what well, a lot. Again, when you are dragging these, don't be thinking like, oh, I don't want to drag it too far. That seems too far. Off, uh, like Lightroom's quite protective. It's not going to, you know, being out here isn't like maximum superpower completely wrecking it. You can end up quite far out here and not be destroying your image, let's say, okay? Don't worry about where the slider is. Just look at your image, be dragging the slider back and forth and decide where you want it to be. You're the photographer, you get to decide or the editor, depending on how you're approaching Lightroom. Okay, shadows the same, back and forth. 
I always start with a big drag. Everyone kind of like starts in my classes. They go like this. They go, is this good? Is this good? Get in there. Give it a shake. See what it does. Oh, yep. Nope. Oh, oh, look at that. A little of stuff in here. That's pretty nice. The tree. All right. I'm going to go about here. Often you can do most of the work in highlights and shadows and then smaller parts in whites and blacks. It depends on the image though. Okay, that's why they're in this order. Broad, broad, less broad. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at that stuff in the sky. There we go. Blacks. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm dragging the pure blacks to make even the ones that were close to being black more black. Okay, these guys here, I'm going to try and push them along towards the pure black because the I, I like the contrast in these um, windows. In real life, they, they are just kind of dirty and not quite, you know, they're quite old um, and mottled, but I want this like really cool contrast between them. Remember, backslash on your keyboard, on, off, on, off. The long way member is down there. I'm not going to mention that anymore. I'm just going to say backslash, okay? You can go down that button if you prefer. Ooh, I like it. So start at the top, broad strokes, crank out the contrast because I do like it, but really contrast is adjusting these options in here, kind of all in one go. All right, so that is the light panel where you do most of your work. Explained a little bit more so you know what you're doing. Remember, just a quick reminder how to reset them. You can, either, I always double click them. You'll see me in the course doing that. It's because that's really common on other Adobe programs. It's much easier just to click the, you know, click the word because it says reset. But you'll see me in this course doing it the painful way by double clicking them because it's really common in other Adobe programs. All right, so that's it. We've got a couple of other photographs that I took. You can play around with these just to practice the settings along here, resetting them, having a play with some images that maybe aren't your own. It's always fun. You don't need to submit these particular ones. Just have a play around with them. And in the next video, we'll set a proper class project. All right, on to that project. All right, that is the end of the video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, give it a like. It helps me out. Uh, also subscribe to the channel because there's lots more Lightroom content where that came from. Uh, if you are sitting there thinking though, I wish you'd just do a course, you know, take me from zero to hero all the way through Lightroom and show me everything. Oh, you're in luck. Uh, I've got something called the Lightroom Essentials course. There'll be a link to it in the description here. Uh, so check that out if you want to go from zero to hero in Lightroom. But for now, carry on, like and subscribe.